Hi, Susan. First, uh, I want to congratulate you on your MIT exceptions. Um, it's really awesome to see you getting into such a nice school. And it's my pleasure to uh, be conducting this Q&A with you. Um, so first question, um, how do you feel after the MIT acceptance? Um, I was really, really excited because honestly, I didn't expect to get into MIT in the first place. It's just so prestigious and also so competitive. And I, was, I remember that I was screaming and I called my family immediately. I also talked to my mentor at school for like half an hour and we were all very happy about that. It was just like a dream come true. Who is the first person you contacted? Um, I'd say my parents, yeah. Yeah, I bet they're super, super happy. Yeah, they were. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, so let's move on to Eureka, actually. What is your uh, research topic and why did you pick it? So in my research project, I used a portable EEG device to measure people's brain waves when they were taking tests. And before they actually started taking the test, I give them different like hints, AKA this test is very hard. You may not do as well, or this, this test is easy. And I'm pretty sure that you can do very well. Like based on the different hints I gave them and also based on uh, their performance, I try to analyze whether their test results were related to the hints I gave them and also to their uh, brain waves because I use EEG to measure their brain waves. And um, I put out about 15 participants and I studied how they performed in the test and their EEG. Um, eventually, I figured out that those negative hints had the most significant impacts on their test performance. But the positive and the neutral were like uh, the control hints didn't really have that much of a di difference. Yeah. So I can see that your research topic is related to human brain, psychological, and human health. Is this the passion that you always had? Yes. Uh, I'm always into uh, neuroscience because I think it's a great way for me to learn about the brain and also how the human brain functions. And personally, one of my family members, my grandpa, um, he is a he was a Parkinson's disease patient, and he passed away when I was in high school, like uh, like ninth grade. And I was just super frustrated and sad that I couldn't help him and. I really want to learn more about the human brain so that maybe in the future I can help more patients like him. Wow, yeah, thanks for sharing this very personal story. Yeah, sometimes family member can be a really big motivator factor for us, especially when it comes to decide where we go in the future. Thank you yeah. again for sharing this, yeah. So um, can you share with me a little bit how about your Eureka experience? Like how did the uh, Eureka professor um, help you during your research and what kind of help is offered by the Eureka professor? Yeah. Yes, of course. So I chose the track of um, portable device and on the f uh, during the first few weeks, the professor gave us weekly lectures, like presentations on different types of portable medical devices. And uh, in the second month, students can choose their own research topic and their own device. In my scenario, I chose portable EEG. And because I'm interested in neuroscience and, a little, and also a little bit about psychology, I decided to narrow down my research topic on uh, human brain during test performance. So that's basically how I did my Eureka project. And I just spent the second month collecting data, doing the experiment and also writing my paper. Mm, that's really cool. Um, do you still remember the background of the professor? Um, did the background actually help you gain some of the experiences during your research? Yes, uh, my professor um, is actually very good at computer science. So I learned a lot about how to graph my data and how to use computational analysis tools such as the R language and also the basic functions in Excel when I talk to my professor. So I think uh, my professor's background really makes a difference, yeah. Okay, sounds great. So, and how did you 
um, use and write your research into your uh, college application, especially the MIT one? Oh yeah, so I did my Utica project uh, the summer during my freshman year. So that was a little bit long, like long ago. And I did two other research projects after that. So I wrote all three projects into my application. And um, I also talked about it uh, with my interviewer during my MIT interview. I didn't really write it in my essay because uh, I'd say my later research projects were a little bit more important. So I spent more time like talking about them in my essays, but like the Eureka project definitely helped me understand what research is like and also uh, whether I am really interested in doing scientific research, yeah. I'm glad that Eureka provides you a little bit of foundation of interest in terms of research, yeah. So uh, let's say uh, we are gonna welcoming a few new uh, students into your Eureka program this year. Um, do you have any advice for them in terms of the research process? Uh, yeah, of course. So first of all, in terms of choosing research topics, I definitely recommend new students to consider what they're actually interested in, like what are some of their hobbies, for example, that they can possibly bring into their research projects. I know some students who love classic music and they study the human brain when they listen to like classic music, which is also very fun to learn, I think. Uh, and also another device I would give is that students should expect that their projects um, may not be finished by the end of the program. And that is totally fine. Like accept non-closure because research is uh, always like a continued like process. It's not just done when the timeline, like when the deadline's there. So yeah, that's also a very important mindset to have. Well, wow, yeah, those are really good advices. And thank you for sharing all of this. And um, yeah, I, re I really wish you great years at MIT. And uh, yeah, best wishes.